Today I'm ready to cut out the dress, since I've taken the body measurements and altered the pattern according to those measurements. And I've made sure that my fabric is pre-shrunk and the green line is straight. So now I'm ready to cut. Since I want to get this dress cut out and marked for you in a little more than 10 minutes, I've asked Mrs. Morling to help me cut it and mark it. Now let's get on with the cutting. Before you actually do start cutting your dress, I would suggest that you review the direction sheet, for there's a wealth of material here. Cutting notes, layout notes, marking. But right now, let's go up to this, uh, these directions for cutting out the interfacing, first of all. According to the direction sheet, these are the three pieces of pattern that need to be interfaced. The collar, the cuff, and the front facing. Now the collar and cuffs need to have extra body. So we'll use this piece of batiste that has been shrunk and straightened. We'll first place the collar, and our pattern says to place this single line on the fold. So be sure you have it right on the fold and pin it in place. Next, the cuffs, and we'll need to cut two, so we'll place that on the <coughs> double thickness. And here we have grain line, which means that this line must be parallel to the selvage. And to be sure that it is parallel, use a ruler and measure from each end of the line to make sure that it's equal distance. And when you do get it parallel to the selvage, pin it in place. Now the front facing needs to have a stiffer interfacing in order to preserve the design of the dress. So we'll use this piece of pellon. This is a non-woven fabric, so it doesn't have a grain line. It doesn't have grain. We don't have to observe grain line of the pattern. So we'll just fold this, place the pattern, and pin it. So we'll have two interfacings. And now, Mrs. Morling, will you finish pinning these and cut those out for me? Here is a layout. According to the view, we're going to use the size and the width of our fabric. And you'll notice between this crosswise fold of material and the lengthwise, it looks as if it's been cut. But I'd like to show you how you can fold your fabric and place your pattern without cutting. Unfold your fabric. Place it flat on the table with the wrong side up, a single thickness. Then take one of your larger pieces of pattern, so the skirt in this case, and place it along the selvage edge of the material. Then we need to check that grain line. We'll do that by measuring from the marked line out to the selvage, and then measure the other end of this line out to the selvage, and bring your pattern so that those will measure exactly the same. And when you get the grain line parallel to the selvage, put some pins on the grain line marking to hold it in place. Then we're ready to put the other piece of skirt on. And since we don't have an up and down to our design, I can reverse this piece of pattern and shove this right over next to the first piece. And 
and then we'll check the grain line on this. Be sure that the grain line is straight with the selvage. Helen, will you let me have the facing pattern now? The inner facing is left pinned to the facing pattern. Then we'll pin all this in place right in this spot. And I'll just anchor that with a couple of pins and check the grain line later. Now we're ready to fold our material crosswise the exact length of our skirt. Now we have our skirt pattern on two thicknesses of fabric. So we'll pin right on through both thicknesses. Be sure your salvages are together. Then pull this right down through the center crease. And you can fold it a little bit more to get it out of the way. Now we're ready to put the back blouse on. We'll place the back pattern next. And the pattern says right along here to place this line on a fold. And being on a fold, it's automatically on the grain. And while I pin this in place, Helen, will you check the grain line and pin the front pattern right about there? I'm going to put only a few pins in at this time, and later I'll put more in before I actually start cutting that. But the part I want you to notice is right here at the armhole where these two patterns overlap. The patterns themselves are overlapping, but the heavy or cutting lines do not overlap, and this will save you material. We'll fold this up so we can get to the rest of our fabric. And the next piece of pattern is a sleeve. Now, Helen, will you check the green line and pin that in place while I put the collar on? The nose the interfacing is still pinned to our collar pattern. And we'll place this right on the fold. And since we need to cut two pieces for the collar, we'll mark the placement of the, this collar there and then move it up for the second cutting. And we'll anchor that in place with a pin. Then the cuffs come right in here. And since we're only planning our pattern at this point, I won't be too concerned about the grain line. We need to cut this a second time, so I'll mark the first placement with a pin and move the cuff up to this second point. And anchor that. Now, you may have been wondering how I knew to uh, cut two uh, sections for the cuff and two for the collar. But on the layout, you'll find one picture of the cuff in a solid line and one in a dotted line. And that always indicates to cut twice. Now we've finished planning for each piece of our pattern. And as soon as Helen finishes checking the grain line and pinning this last piece, we'll start cutting from this end. Leave the fabric as flat as possible when you start to cut your material, but keeping your scissors on the tabletop. And we're cutting right along the cutting line of the pattern. And this has been cut off when we cut the interfacing so that you can see what I'm referring to here. Let's look at this piece that hasn't been cut yet. And this heavy line is the cutting line as it's indicated. And the margin will be cut off as you cut out your pattern. Then when you get up here to the notch, cut it out away from the pattern. We never cut notches in toward the seam, for that weakens it. Follow 
between the cutting line and cutting out the notches are the two main points I wanted to show you about cutting. And now, Helen, will you take this and finish cutting it out while we discuss some other problems. If you like to stand while cutting, you can improvise a cutting table from an adjustable ironing board set at your height and a folding section from your dining room table pad. Now for the pattern markings. We use dressmaker's carbon to transfer the pattern markings to the fabric. And we're going to use a very dark carbon so it will be able to let you see the markings. But we suggest that you pick out a color that is as nearly as possible the color of your dress but will still show up as you want to work with it. You may use a tracing wheel, but I'm going to use a table knife in transferring the markings to my print material. Now, Helen, do you have a piece cut out that I might demonstrate on? We need to mark this dart. We'll do that by placing a piece of carbon underneath the fabric with the carbon side up. Take a second piece of carbon, the carbon side down, and place between the pattern and the fabric. Use a ruler. Make a straight line and mark. And then be sure to mark the end of the dart, the line. Next, we'll need to mark the center front and the buttonholes. That would be this line right down here and the buttonholes. Be sure you mark the end of the buttonholes. And then up here, we'll mark the clip line by coming straight down on the line here and then cross it. Then the other place that we need to mark is down here, the pleat at the waistline, the straight lines, and be sure to mark the end. Of course, you'll want to transfer the markings from the other pieces of your pattern. Next time, I'm going to show you how easy sewing can be if you follow the unit method of construction.